Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, I'm, uh, my name is George Turvey. I'm the artistic director of uh, Papatango Theatre Company. Uh, hello to everybody that's joined so far. Um, I'm going to be uh, talking a little bit about uh, the company um, and the work we do, but I'll just wait uh, for a few more to join uh, before I really get started. Um, it, throughout this uh, next 30 minutes, please feel free to ask any questions uh, at any point, um, and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Uh, whilst not um, interrupting the uh, uh, the session too much, um, but I'll start um, by saying a little bit about uh, myself. Um, I, uh, as I said before, I'm the artistic director of Papatango. I've been the artistic director since the company was uh, founded. 12 years ago. Uh, I co-founded it with uh, two other people uh, who are no longer actively involved. Um, I trained uh, as an actor originally um, and then uh, on, upon graduation uh, co-founded Papatango um, and uh, have been working with the company ever since then. Um, I uh, originally it was as co-artistic director with the two other uh, co-founders and since 2013 it's been uh, as the sole artistic director working with my colleague Chris Foxon who is the executive director of the company. Um, so that's a, a, a little bit about uh, me and my background. Um, I We'll talk a bit more about uh, my role at the company and what I uh, do as we get through the session. But as I said, if there's, if for anybody that's just joined, if there are any uh, questions at any point, please feel free to uh, pop the questions up and then I'll try and answer them as best I can, um, hopefully without interrupting the session too much. But we'll see how we go. So I'll, um, I'll get started now. Um, so Papatango are a new writing company. We're um, a registered charity uh, and we uh, work across, I, I suppose, two different strands, one being the artistic strand and one being the participation and engagement strand. Um, the I'll talk about the artistic strand first and then I'll get on to the uh, participation and engagement strand uh, after that. So um, as, a, as a charity and as a company, what our aims are are to open up pathways into theatre uh, and into new writing and to uh, discover um, and develop and launch the most exciting new writers uh, in the UK. And so we work, uh, to do that, we work across a few different ways. So the main thing that we do, and the main thing that we've been doing for 12 years, has been um, the Papatango, uh, the Papatango New Writing Prize. So the Papatango New Writing Prize is an annual new writing prize um, that guarantees its winner a full production, a four week production in London, um, publication by Nick Hearn Books, um, and a six and a half thousand pound commission for their, the writer's next play. Um, so this year's winner is uh, a fantastic play called Old Bridge, which uh, is by uh, um, Igor Memek, who uh, we just announced recently will be uh, produced at the Bush Theatre when theatres reopen again, which hopefully won't be uh, in the too distant future. Um, and that was chosen from 1,504 plays. So the prize is free to enter. Um, every play that's submitted gets uh, feedback on the uh, on the play they've submitted um, from the reader. So we've, we've been sending out feedback yesterday and today, and uh, it will hopefully finish tomorrow because uh, it takes quite a long time to send out 1,500 uh, emails with feedback. But the feedback is to uh, to explain a little bit about uh, what 
the reader liked about the play and perhaps where the play uh, needs further development and, and where it got in the, um, uh, what stage it got to in the prize. So uh, that that's entirely free because as I say, the, the prize itself is free to enter. Um, we usually open the prize uh, in December time uh, and it's open, the deadline is usually in February and then the production under normal circumstances would go ahead in um, in October, November time. Um, obviously, um, this is completely up in the air at the moment because of the uh, everything that's been going on. Um, but the the prize will be back. I don't know the there's not a confirmed date for when entries will uh, will open, but it's definitely worth keeping uh, an eye out on. Uh, papatango.co.uk which is where we uh, announce when the prize will be open we're also on twitter uh, at papatango tc and we're on facebook as well so you can find us on there as papatango theatre company and we uh, you can also join our mailing list which is on papatango.co.uk in which we always uh, let everybody know about the prize so as i say the prize uh, is aimed at uh, it's open to anybody um, there's very few restrictions on what the play can be. They're all on our website uh, with the entry requirements, but essentially it can, uh, it just has got to have been, uh, it can't have been produced before. Um, it has to be roughly 90 minutes, at least 90 minutes in length, um, but, uh, and it has to be a, a new piece of work. But other than that, it's a very uh, open process um, and aimed at anybody that, uh, that has a play. Uh, previous winners of the prize include um, Dominic Mitchell, who won the first year, who uh, then went on to write In the Flesh for BBC Three and won two, uh, two BAFTAs. Um, uh, Dawn King, whose play Foxfinder won in 2011 um, and then um, has been on in 20 countries uh, worldwide. It was on in the West End, uh, it won Royal National Theatre Foundation Playwriting Award uh, and was named as one of the, uh, the top uh, five plays of the year uh, in 2011 by The Independent. Um, other winners include uh, Samuel Bailey Shook, which was on um, at Southwark Playhouse last year uh, and was due to transfer to Trafalgar Studios uh, before coronavirus uh, made it a, a, a not possible. Um, uh, other previous winners include uh, Stuart Pringle with his play Trestle, which was on the Southern Playhouse, uh, Iman Qureshi, uh, who's now under commission to uh, the Bush Soho Theatre, uh, the Royal Court, the Almeida Theatre. So it, 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 and a lot of these um, prize winners, uh, the, the, the play that won the prize in, uh, and that we produced was their first major production and uh, it, with our development and help, um, it went on, was very successful and has now launched um, a nice career for, for the playwrights. So that's really the aim of the prize. And we're not looking for the most developed play. We're not looking for the most polished play. Um, you know, it, part of what we do as a company is, uh, is a lot of dramaturgy on that play, a lot of development uh, from, the, from the minute that it wins the prize. Uh, to the day it goes on, we uh, we really try and drive that play and make it the best that it can possibly be. Um, so it's if you have a script, then send it into the prize because you never know. You know, don't don't feel like um, you can't send it in because it's not. You don't feel like it's the the right play. Send it in and uh, and see what happens because um, we we're, we're looking for something in the writing and in the writer's voice. We're not particularly looking for a play that we can stage tomorrow. That's that's not, uh, unless that play is incredibly exciting, that's that's not uh, of the, the prime interest for us. What's the most important thing is, is this story uh, gripping and is this story demanding to be staged? So uh, that's, that's more what we're looking for. Feel free to ask any questions uh, for anybody that's just joined. Um, and I'll try and answer them as we go along. But that is uh, that is one of the strands that we work along. So it's the New Writing Prize, which as I say is an annual New Writing Prize um, that's free to enter. All the details can be found on our website. 
papatango.co.uk and uh, every play that is submitted gets feedback within uh, you know within sort of four months of the four or five months of the uh, of the prize closing so it's definitely worth um, submitting to the prize because uh, it's uh, it's a great thing take my word for it um, so that's uh, the, the main artistic project that we do. A second artistic strand that we uh, work on is uh, called the Resident Playwright Scheme, which we've been running for, I think, uh, four or five years now. And the, the Resident Playwright Scheme works slightly differently. So if uh, in the New Writing Prize we're looking for the most exciting script, uh, with the uh, Resident Playwright Scheme we're looking for something slightly different. We're, we're more interested in the writer themselves uh, and the reason why they need that more intensive support uh, for perhaps a, a longer period of, uh, a, of time. And with the Resident Playwright Scheme we will commission that playwright uh, from an idea and take that idea until uh, it, it enters production. So it works in a, in a similar way in terms of the development process but it's a longer span of time because the, the, the um, the dates for the production aren't set. So we've just had a question in, are there different steps of the reading judging process for the award? There certainly are. So just to go back on the uh, New Writing Prize, the New Writing Prize sort of works through four different stages. So we have a reading team of uh, uh, this year of 26 readers. Every play that is submitted to the prize is read uh, in the first round. Uh, it's sent out and it's read by um, uh, on uh, by one of the 26 readers and then uh, from that first round we're looking to put through maybe three to four hundred plays from 1500 and um, so probably about 25 percent of the plays make it through to the second round um, the second round uh, the plays are read by a second reader so uh, they they will then have uh, essentially two champions for that play um, and from that, we're then looking more and more at uh, at a play that we feel could be a serious contender to win the uh, award. From that, we uh, go to a third stage, which might be um, anywhere between 20 to 30 plays. I think this year it was 25 plays uh, that make it through to the third round. And then at that point, we have a voting system. So we, uh, as, an, as a prize, don't have a, a, a celebrity panel of judges or anything like that. Um, every reader that reads in the first round reads all the way to the final. And when we have the, uh, those, say, 25 plays, we ask the, every reader to read those 25 plays. So those plays would have now been read by uh, at three people. Um, and then we have a voting system so each voter each uh, reader gets to vote on their top five plays with five points going to their favorite play four points for their second all the way down to one point for their fifth favorite play and then we collect all of the points and we find uh, out the top five plays from those 25 plays based on the points and we're not looking just at the um when we get to the top five we're not looking just at the uh, the overall points we're also looking at how many times a play appeared on uh, somebody's top five list we're also looking at how many times it was in the the, the top uh, first place of uh, of people's uh, um, preferences so that we have as much uh, different data about those plays as possible and then once we have our top five plays that's the point in which the uh, anonymity of the playwrights uh, goes and we meet those top five playwrights to discuss their plays and the reason we do that is because, um, the, as I said before, the prize goes through a very intensive um, uh, period of development. And it, that's not necessarily something every writer wants to do or, or, or might not be willing to do. Um, so it's really important that they are as happy with our process as we are with the, with the choice of script. So it, it's a discussion. We talk about what um, what might be important um, mainly we're asking the questions there's, there's no point in us telling a, a playwright what it is we want to do you know we're, what we're really interested in is uh, what that playwright feels uh, is going to be important over the next six months five six months um, and then from those discussions it will be a mixture of those discussions and the point system 
of deciding uh, who the winning playwright will be. And we also then have a, a, a final uh, stage in which we, uh, can, uh, as well as meeting the writers, we send out those shortlisted plays uh, to some trusted advisors, which might be our partners like Nick Hearn Books or the Bush Theatre or whoever we're working with at that point in time to get their advice on those final plays. And then when we have all of that information, uh, we make a decision based on that. So it's quite a rigorous uh, process. But as I say, the important thing for us is that it's a very fair and democratic process in terms of that every reader that reads in the first round uh, helps to make the final decision in the end. So it's not about us trying to bring in a big name panel and then making final decisions. It's about everybody that's been involved in the process making that decision. So we have as many uh, uh, voices in the final decision um, as possible. So that's what we're looking to do with the prize. Um, anybody else feel free to uh, throw out any questions at any point. Um, so going back to the uh, resident playwright scheme, uh, as I say, it works. It, we have with that we open up uh, for submissions. We generally have about two hundred applications for it, and we're looking for a different um, a different thing than the prize. You know, we're looking for the reason as to why this playwright might need uh, that position and might need that extra level of support. So it might be that. Um, Financially, they don't uh, feel that they can um, complete a full length play that they'd be able to submit to the prize because they don't have the time and the, uh, and, uh, and the finances to be able to dedicate themselves to that. So the resident playwright scheme might be more suited to them, or it could be that they feel like they're, they're at a certain point in their career in which they're struggling to break through for whatever reason, because uh, maybe because uh, it, they're older and they feel that a lot of the opportunities are, for, are aimed at younger writers. So it, it depends on what that, uh, what that person is, is particularly looking for. So for instance, our first uh, resident playwright was a playwright called May Someone Yambe. Uh, his reason for applying for the residency was because he'd been through um, the Royal Court Young Writers Programme, he'd been through Soho's Theatre's writing programme, I think West Yorkshire Playhouse, BBC Writers Room, and he'd been through all of these things that, that people had expressed a great amount of interest in his writing, but he'd never been able to get that production. So it was really important for us to be able to offer him that resident playwright scheme uh, and to, t to continue to develop his work and to get it to the point in which it could be produced which it was. Uh, it was a play called After Independence that was on at the Arcola Theatre, uh, did very well. Um, it won an Alfred Fagan Audience Award and then was um, uh, adapted for BBC Radio 4. So and now May uh, is, is doing very well. He was just about to have a show on with the National Theatre of Scotland um, that unfortunately uh, couldn't happen because of, uh, of the coronavirus, but uh, that will happen obviously when theatres open again. So the, that was the reason for May getting it. The second resident playwright was um, a fantastic playwright called Sam Potter, who felt that um, she came to writing uh, later than other people and felt like the, the, the opportunities weren't there for her. Um, and she, you know, she wanted the time and space to be able to develop her craft. Um, and uh, she did and she wrote a fantastic play called Hannah, which was on at the Arcola again and uh, had a UK tour. So that was, she was our second resident playwright. And we've had uh, three others since then whose scripts are, are still in development. So that's uh, that's a little bit about the resident playwright scheme. So there are two artistic strands of the company. The, uh, the other strand is the participation and engagement strand, uh, which is called Go Write. Um, and with Go Write, it's about uh, encouraging people to write um, and to continue to learn their craft. So it works across in different ways. Uh, one way is that we go into state schools, uh, we teach playwriting over two workshops with secondary school students. We go in and teach playwriting. They write short plays in, uh, in groups. Um, we then publish their plays in a book and we take actors in and perform their plays. So it works in a very similar way. Uh, uh, way to how the prize works in terms of that we're trying to encourage playwriting uh, as an option for uh, state school students. Um, we do uh, 
value writing courses, which we've done regionally. Um, we've done them in Bury St. Edmunds. We've done it in Luton Hat Factory. We've done it uh, done one down in Plymouth, uh, in Taunton, uh, in Havant. And the aim for that is to, um, to get a group of local writers, up to 18 local writers, to teach them playwriting over six months, uh, with the course culminating in every uh, member of the group having written a full length play and then we perform extracts of those uh, plays and the aim is to try and encourage a network of playwrights in that area that can continue uh, to support each other um, from then on. So th that those courses are targeted at areas that don't have, um, that have very little or no new writing provision uh, and as I say the aim is to try and to grow and uh, uh, a group of playwrights who can support each other and hopefully create work in that area. So that's the playwriting courses. We do uh, free adult drop-in courses. All of our courses and um, all of our opportunities are free to enter. We never charge anything. Um, so the adult uh, drop-in workshops can be on anything, uh, any element of playwriting. It could be on characterization. It could be on structure. It could be on dialogue. Um, we quite often bring in outside directors or writers to lead sessions. So Dawn King has led a session. Sharon Clark has led a session. Um, so we we always open up these um, to, to bring different elements and, and to teach different things to the playwrights and a lot of those are, 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 have been recorded and are on our website I think at least half of them are captioned and we're trying to caption the rest of them so they're on our website which is papatango.co.uk um, so you can go and check them out. Uh, there's a question here uh, do you have plans to collaborate with international theatre makers outside the UK? Um, I mean we would always be open uh, we would very much always be open to um, uh, to collaborating so please feel free to drop us an email um, you can find out our details on our website or my email address should anybody want to email me is george at papatango.co.uk so um, feel free to um, uh, to drop me an email if you would like to find out about that further um, another uh, thing that we run with our um, uh, our outreach with GoWrite uh, is a, a live chat uh, system which is uh, every other Thursday on our website again papatango.co.uk and um, we have a live chat which is just a little sort of speech bubble that pops up on the bottom of the website on the live chat page and for two hours every Thursday you can come and speak to myself or my colleague Chris Foxen who run uh, Papatango about anything to do with theatre, about new writing, anything at all really. Uh, it's free again uh, and we're there for two hours that we can uh, give any advice uh, on anything uh, and people have come on there um, to ask us about negotiating a deal with a the theatre, people have come on to ask us about agents, people have come on to ask about their, their own writing because they feel stuck so feel free to come on uh, there every other Thursday I think it's this Thursday uh, coming is the next one it's between 10am uh, and 12 um, and it's as I say it's free and it's a, a wonderful service and we're on there for two hours so feel free to to come and chat to us about anything and all of the information about any upcoming workshops that we have or playwriting courses um, are all on our website and also sent out to our mailing list so if you want to join up to our mailing list, please feel free to do that. Uh, and you, they're, they're the first places that we send out all of this uh, information. But do pop by the uh, the live chat facility because it's a really good, uh, a really great thing to be able to, you know, it's, re it's very important for us as a company that we're open and that you get to speak to us. The same as when we're teaching uh, any of the... Um, Playwriting workshops, it's always myself or Chris. It's very important to us uh, that it, it, as a company that you can access us uh, in as many ways as possible. So join the live chat, you go on papatango.co.uk, um, you go to the menu, under go right, there will be um, a heading that says live chat, just click on that. And then uh, on Thursday when it's live, there'll be a little, uh, I think it's an orange box in the bottom right hand corner you click on it, you put your details in, and you immediately uh, connect to myself or Chris. Uh, it's really, really easy to do, um, and you can stay on there and ask as many questions as you want during that two hours, uh, or you can pop in 
and there's no limit to the amount of times that you can uh, visit the live chat so feel free to come and join us anytime it's a as i say it's a very good uh, facility so please do feel free to to make use of that so that is what we uh, that is pretty much what we are as a company as i said at the very beginning for anybody that's joined later um, you know, the most important thing for us is to encourage new writing uh, and to, to try and connect with as many writers as we can as possible, whether that be through workshops and training or whether it be through the prize and giving feedback. Um, it, the other thing about the prize is it's entirely anonymous entry. It, everything is judged entirely based on, on the quality of the writing. So if you've got a script, please do uh, enter it into the prize because it's uh, it's a really great opportunity i mean i don't think prizes are perfect things but it, it, it in the uh, the way that the industry is running at the moment there's very few opportunities for for new writers to break through uh, and the prize is a really really great uh, launch pad for playwrights so please do check that out and um as i say usually the prize opens in december it might be slightly delayed um that's not confirmed yet so if you join up to our mailing list or keep a regular check on our Twitter, which is uh, at Papatango TC, um, then you will uh, you, you'll be able to uh, see when any of our opportunities open up. Um, we've just got four minutes left. So if anybody's got any more questions on anything on the company, um, uh, how, when does one apply for the Resident Playwrights uh, Writers Program? So the, the Resident Playwrights Program opens up at different uh, times. Basically, uh, it's important for us that we don't have too much of a backlog because uh, a real key thing of the, um, of the Resident Playwrights Scheme is that we, uh, that we take those plays to production. And because of that, it's, uh, it's important that we're not... Um, commissioning too many people that we've got too many plays and can't program them. So at the moment, we've we've very recently, I think only three months ago, taken on our latest uh, resident playwright. So it's likely to be uh, not for sort of a year's time for the next uh, round to open up. So uh, keep, keep an eye out for that. Um, any others? Are there any opportunities to volunteer for Papa Tango? Um, there's not. There's not really any opportunities to volunteer. I mean, we do have a, a, a reading team, obviously, for the prize. And if you're interested in being a reader, the best thing to do is to uh, to email us, which can be on the email I gave out earlier, or info at papatango.co.uk to express your interest in being a reader. We have a, a, a reading test in which we send three plays out to uh, to potential readers. And then um, it, ask for the feedback on those three plays and which round they would put them through. And that's just to check that, um, that your taste uh, and your view on these plays align with, with what the prize uh, and what we as a company do. So that's how we do that. Um, it, it's not a volunteer position. It is actually a paid position to be a reader for the Papatango Prize. Uh, it's not a great deal of money, but it is uh, important that everybody does get paid. So uh, if you are interested in being a reader, please feel free to drop us an email. Um, obviously, we're not looking for readers at this point in time because the prize isn't open yet, but we can keep your details on file or um, tell you when we might be looking for readers again. So uh, it's worth keeping an eye out um, on that. Um, are there any other questions at all? Well, uh, we I'll wrap it up now, but thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I hope you found this uh, informative and I hope it's told you a little bit more about Papa Tango. Please do check out the King's Head, uh, King's Head Theatre's other live um, uh, chats like this, uh, because they are all fantastic. And they, they also have on their Instagram page um, all of the previous recorded sessions. Um, do uh, here's a question that's just come in do you think new texts benefit from getting produced in video film format i think it's entirely dependent i i i, I think um in terms of is it good to have some kind of recorded um archive of these 
scripts, I think that is quite possible because of the fact that, um, you know, a very sad thing that happens to new writing is after the initial production, uh, you often don't ever see those plays happen again. So having some kind of uh, video film format is is wonderful in terms of what everything that's happening because of coronavirus and things going online instead of um, instead of live. I think they can benefit from it, but I think it's very specific to the type the, the piece of writing. I don't think it, it's necessarily a negative thing, and I also think it's it, it's down to the quality uh, of the recording um and uh, and what is, to, is you know are you essentially just trying to make a film or are you trying to show it as as it would be as a piece of theater i think is a really key thing to consider i don't think it's it, it's a case of that um one thing is the same as the other i think you know if you're very very deliberately making it as a piece of film uh, i think that that's one thing and i think uh, if you are trying to capture some essence of what that would be as a piece of theater that's a very different thing and i think that's always a, a key consideration um when working on those things um but thank you so much for joining me uh, and thank you to the king's head for uh, for having us and hosting me uh, it's been a real pleasure talking at to you um, and do uh, do check out the the King's Head Theatre's uh, um, uh, Instagram so that you can see all of the previous sessions that have been recorded um, but take care and uh, good luck and uh, I hope to bump into you in real life at some point uh, everyone but thank you so much for, uh, for coming along take care